Everyone knows this place. An iconic wall that became a true trademark of Jerusalem. But what exactly are those stones? And why do Jewish people gather there to pray? Was this place always Jewish? Who put those stones together? And do they have any connection to the second temple built by Herod the Great? In this episode, we will try to answer all those questions. We will look at the history of this place, talk about its significance, and will also share a few secrets connected to this place. But before I will do that, please don't forget to give a like to this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment. Looking at the statistics, many people still choose to watch a video without any reaction. And this is cool, I am still grateful for your time. But if you would prefer to make an effort and react to this video, this will mean a lot to me. So thanks in advance. With this out of the way, let's begin our investigation. Before I will discuss the Western Wall, or as some call it, the Wailing Wall, I must provide you with a bit of a background of the temple design. To do this, I will use one of the 3D models I created, that I used many times in my other presentations. So, as you remember, after the Jewish people returned from Persia under the guidance of Ezra and Nehemiah, they started to build the second temple. According to the Bible, the second temple was originally a rather modest structure, constructed by a number of Jewish returnees under the appointed governor Zerubbabel. The Bible also tells us that the Jews that remembered the glory of Solomon's temple, which was destroyed just 70 years earlier by Babylon, cried when they saw the second temple. They cried not because they were so touched by this special moment, but because the second temple could not compare to the first temple. As the years progressed, the temple complex grew, but the temple sanctuary stayed the same size. The sanctuary size remained the same because we have specific measurements of the temple in the Bible. Considerable enlargement to the temple was made during the Hashmonean period when the temple complex was expanded to the south towards the city of David. But the big changes came during Herod's rule. Herod was an intriguing person indeed. He was hated by the Jews because he was not really a Jew. He was born in or around 72 BC in Idumea, south of Judea. He was the second son of Antipater the Idumean, a high-ranking official under the Entrach Hyrcanus II and Cypros, a Nabatian Arab princess from the city of Petra. This is in present-day Jordan. Therefore, Herod was never accepted by the Jews as a real Jew, and many Jewish people despised him because of his background. Herod knew this well and wanted to please the Jewish people somehow, so he decided to do what he knew best. Do you know why Herod is called the Great? Not because he was a great person. In fact, he was a terrible person and murdered his family members. But one thing he was good at was building. Herod was known for his colossal building projects throughout Judea, like the enclosure around the cave of the Partiarchs in Hebron, the construction of the port at Caesarea, the fortress at Masada, and Herodium. His greatest project was, however, the enlargement of the temple complex. Imagine this, a person who you hate is telling you he will start messing around 
with the most precious building to your religion. Obviously, many Jewish people were worried that an Edomite would begin building the temple. Herod knew this would not be easy, so he did make a special preparation before the construction even started. First, Herod gathered all the materials needed to build the temple. Herod began the construction work of the temple in the 18th year of his reign, around 19 BC. The temple building itself was completed in 18 months and the outer cloisters in 8 years so that Herod could formally dedicate the temple in 10 BC. However, the construction work must have continued at such a pace that we read in John's Gospel 2.20 that the temple had been 40 years in building, slightly more than the biblical generation of 40 years. This brings us up to the time of the fifth Roman procurator Pontius Pilate, that's 26 to 36 AD, during which time Jesus is recorded as having beheld the city from the Mount of Olives with his disciples. To avoid interruption in the temple service, Herod had all the materials made ready in advance, preparing a thousand wagons to carry the stones and employing 10,000 highly skilled workmen. A thousand priests were divided into those who would be stonemasons or carpenters and given special training for this sensitive task. Herod doubled the size of the previous Temple Mount, which the Mishnah describes as having been a square of 500 cubits. Herod expanded the platform even further to the south and then built the magnificent Royal Stoa at the top of it. The western extension called for a partial filling in the Tyropean Valley. The western wall itself had four entranceways, which were beginning in the north, the Warrens Gate, the bridge which ran over Wilson's Arch, Barclays Gate, and the stairway which ran over the Robinson's Arch. No expansion was possible on the east because of the depth of the Kidron Valley below. The line of the eastern wall was therefore unchanged and merely extended to meet the new north and southeast corners. Because the eastern wall of Herod's temple followed the same line as the Solomon's, the portico that ran along it was known as Solomon's Porch. Here, it was that Jesus was almost stoned on one wintry day during the Feast of Hanukkah. That's written in John 10, verses 22 to 39. And also here, the disciples used to congregate and teach after the death of their master. This is written in Acts 3.11, and Acts 5.12. And so the dimensions of the temple complex were now northern wall 1035 feet, that's 315 meters, southern wall 912 feet, that's 278 meters, eastern wall 1536 feet, that's 468 meters, and the western wall 1590 feet, that's 485 meters. Here you can see a drawing showing Herod's expansions compared to earlier developments of the temple complex. Now, returning to the western wall. The western wall is part of the extension to the temple complex. Obviously, the western wall is located on the western side of the temple complex. To give you an understanding, 
The western wall is situated between the western bridge known as the Robinson's Arch and the Barclays Gate. If you would like to learn more about all the gates leading to the temple complex, check out my video on the gates to the temple. I am putting a link in the description of this episode for you to explore later. In AD 70, the Jewish temple is destroyed by the Romans. The Romans ensured that nothing would be left of the original temple building. But when they attempted to destroy the whole temple complex, certain problems arose. You see, the Romans did their best by throwing huge stones from the top of the walls surrounding the temple to the street and shops that ran beneath them. And actually, if you go to the Davidson Archaeological Park, you can see those vast stones that the Romans threw down. Among those stones, archaeologists have found the Trumpeting Place inscription, a monumental Hebrew inscription which the Roman legionaries threw down during the destruction of the temple. The Trumpeting Place inscription is an inscribed stone from the 1st century AD discovered in 1968 by Benjamin Mazar in his early excavations of the southern wall of the Temple Mount. The stone, showing just two complete words written in a square Hebrew alphabet. The first word is translated to the place and the second word of trumpeting or blasting or blowing, giving the phrase to the trumpeting place. It is believed to be a directional sign for the priest who blew a trumpet announcing the beginning and the end of the Shabbat in Jerusalem. So the Romans did their best to destroy the temple complex, but at some point they did stop and a certain part of this supportive structure remains till today. Why did they stop? Well, because the stones got larger and larger and at some point it was even impossible to remove all the stones. You see, the western wall is part of this supportive structure that Herod built. Herod's plan of expanding the temple was so ambitious that he used enormous stones to enlarge the whole mountain. To do that, his engineers used colossal stones that filled up the Tyropeon Valley. Today, if you go to the Western Wall Tunnels Tour, you can see one of the biggest stones of the whole construction. This stone used to hold the platform and is 13.5 meters or 44.5 feet long and 3.3 meters that's 11 feet tall and weights hundreds of tons. So the Romans did their best but to get rid of those massive stones that were the foundation of the platform you would need some kind of explosives to move them. So the stones remain today to witness to us the presence of the ancient temple that stood on the Temple Mount. Now, after the Roman destruction of Jerusalem, the Jewish people were separated from the Temple Mount for almost 2000 years. Here is a list of the nations that controlled the Temple Mount after the Roman destruction. For all those years, the Western Wall became a symbol for the Jewish people, reminding them where the temple once stood. The wall, in times past, was often called the Wailing Wall, as it is, among other things, the place where the Jews have traditionally mourned the loss of their historic temples. The modern Israelis simply refer to the place as Hakotel, the wall. As is evident in this photo, the western wall 
continues only a small portion of the entire western enclosure wall of Herod, which stretches approximately to the right edge of the photo and well out of sight to the left. Now, moving to the 20th century, I would like to show you some historical pictures which will illustrate how this place has changed. I will show you some older pictures that are dating between 1898 and 1946. As seen here, an Arab neighborhood known as the Mograh B quarter once fronted the western wall and, as a result, the actual prayer area consisted of a narrow line at the foot of the wall, the building seen here piled up in front of the wall. You can see that in the center. They are clustered around the Mughrah B gate into the Haram compound. When the Mughrah B quarter was raised by the Israelis in June 1967, the lower parts of many of these structures were left in place and became the base of the earthen pedestrian ramp up to the gate. The only gate through which non-Muslims are allowed to enter in the Haram Temple Mount. This ramp was in use from 1967 until 2004 when part of it collapsed and it was replaced by a temporary wooden ramp. The ruins of those buildings and much older structures underneath have once again been exposed archaeologically in anticipation of construction of a new foot bridge up to the gate. Here is another view of the western wall and its surroundings. This view, looking generally east, is taken from the Jewish quarter and shows the Mount of Olives in the distance. Stretching across the right side of the photo is the western wailing wall. And on the Mount of Olives, the tower on the left is the Augusta Victoria Hostel, probably under renovation following the 1927 earthquake. This photo was taken near the Dun Gate, looking north, probably from the atop the city wall. The pathway which travelers a vast cactus field leads towards the Arab Mugrabi quarter seen in the distance. Some buildings of the Jewish quarter are visible at the upper left, built upon the scarp of the Jerusalem western hill. The large cactus plants are the sabra, principally peer native to the Holy Land, and the locals would have harvested a field like this in the midsummer for the sweet eatable fruit. The lower two-thirds of this scene is today covered by the approach of buses and taxis bringing the visitors to the Western War prayer area and by the entrance security kiosks leading onto the modern expansive plaza. If you want to know where the Western Wall would be, it would be off the photo at upper right. Looking north along the wall, this photo suggests that in former times the separation of men and women under their own prayer areas was not strictly observed, as it is today. Here you can see a text of one of the lamentations recited by the Jews on the 9th of Av, the memorial day of the destruction of the temple, as they fast and pray before the wedding wall. The last photo I want to show you is a view looking south along the wall. 
You can see here a graffiti painted on the great stones and this graffiti is no longer visible because it was removed in recent decades. Well, I hope this video will help you in better understanding what exactly is the Western Wall. I could share with you much, much more, but I think for this episode it is enough. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let me know if you would like to learn more about the Western Wall and should I continue with this topic. At the end of my video I want to give a special thank you for all the people who decided to support the channel, either by becoming a member on YouTube or a patron on the patron page. I really, really appreciate your support. It motivates me to continue this work and I promise I will try to improve. If you would like to join as a member, just go to the main page channel and click join or you can click on the patron icon in the top of the right corner. Also, I will be releasing some of my art and 3D rendering to public. If you would like to buy some materials for your own purpose, visit my Adobe Stock webpage. I am putting a link to the materials in the description. As time progresses, I will be releasing more stuff, so keep an eye for that. All the best to you and see you in the next video. Shalom.